Hello, everyone. My name is Mohamed Malloy. I'm one of the interventional radiologists at Emory University Hospital, where I serve as the assistant program director in interventional radiology of independent and integrated residency. A little background on me. I grew up um, in Germantown, Maryland, on the Northeast, and uh, made my way to medical school and did my residency at Nassau University Medical Center. Um, I did a traditional diagnostic radiology residency. I did a preliminary year in medicine. Um, and I was the last class of being the official fellow um, in which I did one year of fellowship at Emory University. So how did I get interested in interventional radiology? My first exposure was actually during one of my pulmonology electives, um, which you know, the interventional radiologist was doing a lung biopsy and my attendee was like, you know, why don't you go check it out? So I went down there, um, saw the lung biopsy and there was a pneumothorax afterwards. And immediately after, without hesitation, a chest tube was placed and the patient started doing better almost immediately. And that was kind of what opened my eyes to what interventional radiology was. Um, once I started residency, I knew that I wanted to be in a specialty that was hands-on, that was clinical. Um, so interventional radiology was a no brainer for me. Um, we did not have ESIR at that time at my residency program, but essentially I functioned as one. Um, I took any opportunity I had to do, whether it was a pick line, an abscess drain, a biopsy, um, an angio, um, I was always looking forward to cases. Um, the good thing about the program where I did my residency was that there was no fellows. So a lot of hands-on experience, um, a lot of ultrasound and CT guided procedures, which assist in making you an excellent radiologist. And if you can hit a small basilic vein in the arm, then hitting a femoral artery and radial artery becomes a little bit more easier. Uh, so I would say that the hands-on experience, working up the patient from start to bottom, really being held to a standard of, standard of a fellow during residency, really helped me flourish in becoming an interventional radiologist today. Having an excellent diagnostic background is so important and critical in becoming an excellent interventional radiologist. Understanding anatomy, understanding what you're looking for, you know, what may one outside read may read as a cancer may not be, may be something benign or vice versa. So having two sets of eyes look at something and looking at and taking, taking into consideration the entire clinical picture and being able to bridge that gap is so crucial. Um, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to really spend time in the reading room, to spend time with every single specialty, whether it's a GU rotation, whether it's a thoracic rotation, ultrasound, body imaging, neuroradiology, all of it is so, so important um, because that just allows you to be a complete interventional radiologist. Um, you know, and, and and I joke about this, but it's so true. Like who would have thought that interventional radiology would be in the endocrinology space, but we're doing adrenal vein samplings, we're doing thyroid goiter embolizations, we're doing FNAs and ablations for thyroid nodules. So we are continuing to push the boundaries in interventional radiology. So while you're in training, pay attention on every rotation and on every specialty because that will just make you a better interventional radiologist. So some other task that an interventional radiologist is responsible for is rounding. Rounding is so critical because it helps assess whether this patient needs another intervention or needs an intervention at all. And oftentimes you will be that gap once again, bridging the clinical picture and what is found on imaging and assessing what treatment options are best for the patient. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've assessed a patient and I found something completely new on imaging or you know, it wasn't read yet, and I was the first one to lay, lay eyes on it. Um, and oftentimes we're leading the discussion with that, uh, with family members and with our referring doctors. So it's, it's very, very critical to round, to be present, to show your face, um, and to be available. You know, the best advice I got when I started residency was from one of my mentors in residency, and they told me, listen, you can be great technically all you want, but the three A's of success is, 
being available, amicable, and then able. If you're not the first two, it doesn't matter how good you are. So continue to be a people's person, continue to work on communication skills. Um, and we already have to do that, right? During our diagnostic radiology residency, when we find a critical finding, we're calling a referring doctor to say, hey, listen, this is ruptured appendicitis, or hey, this person has a massive PE. Um, so continue to work on that throughout your rotations and also throughout your residency. What I love most about being an interventional radiologist is that often providers call us and say, hey, listen, what can you do to help this patient? We're running out of options here. And we have multiple agents, we have multiple treatment options that we can provide these patients and sometimes where they're saving grace. So being in that position really allows us to push the boundaries, push the limits, right? And along those same lines in the era of precision medicine, new technology is constantly coming up. Innovation is constantly happening. And this allows us to try new embolics, try new interventional oncology treatments, try new needles to provide efficient and safe care for our patients. You know, I've gotten a lot of the same advice and it helped me get to where I'm at today. The best advice I got was to be involved and be involved early, whether it's through the ACR resident fellow student section or the SIR resident fellow student section. Join the committees, help out, see what projects are available because that will help you build connections. Find a mentor, whether it's going through SIR Connect or whether it's going to your local institution or radiology program, the websites and those resources are endless. And that's what's gonna help you get to your next step and achieve your goal. You can find a mentor who share similar interests, whether it's basketball, football, sports, food, et cetera, et cetera has a similar background, or is near your home state. Attend local angel clubs and meetings. Allows you to build a network, meet residents and fellows, and those are the people that may vouch for you. Research. I know everybody wants to do research, and that can sometimes be tricky, depending on what resources are available to you. Um, whether your home institution has a program or not, um, whether if you're applying from out of country and those resources are available to you, but don't be shy, reach out to people, reach out to people early on and see how you can help. It can be as simple as an education poster or even a case report. Attend social media events and stay engaged. Don't count yourself out if you, if you do not match into an IR integrated residency. Stay persistent, continue to work hard, work on the things I mentioned earlier and you'll succeed. Networking is one of the most important things in IR. We are a small knit community and one person vouching for you can go a very, very long way. Thank you very much and hope this video helps you out.